All right, I have the pleasure of welcoming our fantastic keynote speaker. I had the pleasure of listening to him yesterday. It was fantastic. Um, Dr. Granger is a graduate of the University of the Rockies where he received a doctorate degree in clinical psychology with a specialization in forensics. He also received a master's degree in counseling and human services as well as his bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. He has earned several awards and scholarships for demonstrated scholarly excellence and his dedication to the field of psychology, with particular interests in existential and humanistic psychology and areas relative to diversity and human dignity. Incidentally, he is originally a product of the inner city, where gross poverty and dropping out of high school facilitated it in his virtually succumbing to a life on the streets of Chicago. However, through perseverance and determination, by enlisting in the U.S. Army and beginning his educational pursuits at the community college level, he has since served in many capacities in the arena of human services, to including the founder and pastor, as well as a psychotherapist at the Big Real Ministries Incorporated in Colorado Springs. He is also a professor at Pikes Peak Community College and adjunct faculty member of Saybrook University as a part of the Existential, Humanistic, and Transpersonal Psychology Specialization with an endeavor to work in the transformative social change and clinical specializations as well. His embodiment of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and reenactment of the I Have a Dream speech along with his oratory gifts that give life to just about any topic, this has rendered him a desired and sought after speaker. His doctoral dissertation was titled Perceptions of Racial Microaggressions Among African American Males in Higher Education, a Heuristic Inquiry. If I could get a round of applause to bring Dr. Granger up to the stage. Thank you. First, I would like to give honor to whom honor is due. I would like to acknowledge Justin Carter, who I am very honored to have befriended and have gotten to know him over this past year. He is a tremendous person and so I'm very happy to to be in his presence and actually somewhat humble and I don't want to put Justin on the spot but if, if there ever was a person whom I've had the pleasure of meeting who is a who is a total person who is all that it is Justin Carter, so I just want to say thank you, Justin. Also, I just want to thank uh, Dr. Brent Robbins uh, for his uh, continued friendship uh, down through the years and, uh, and, uh, and just being there on my journey with me. And uh, Dr. Robbins is a scholar and, uh, and just a wonderful person and thank you for just having me here at Point Park. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, I, I am happy to, to be in your presence. However, I am not happy to be in Pittsburgh with the sub-zero weather. <laughs> I do not do cold. In a speech to over 2,000 people at Morgan State University, Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, delivered a violent screed 
calling for a holy race war against whites. He praised the violence in Ferguson and condemned black leaders who did not support his race revolution as pacifiers, cowardly, and punkified. He called for an explosion of violence against, and I quote, the white man's tyranny on black people. He said, young blacks are ready for war and don't want compromising talk. If 50% of all black people died fighting the white man, it would be worth it, he added. I submit to you today that this less than savory action must be condemned. Violence is not and has not been the answer. Let us remember today Matthew Shepard the 21-year-old white college student from the University of Wyoming, who in 1998 was beaten, tortured, and murdered because he was gay. Let us remember Trayvon Martin, the 17-year-old African-American high school student who in 2012 was gunned down by a security guard because he looked suspicious. Let us remember all the marginalized groups whose young members have become martyrs because they represented something or someone that was different. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as one of the greatest demonstrations against injustice in the history of Point Park University. Seven score and 12 years ago, a great American of whom Martin Luther King Jr. reference during his iconic I Have a Dream speech signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 150 plus years later, the Negro still is not free. 150 plus years later, the 
life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of discrimination and the chains of mass incarceration. 150 plus years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled. And the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 150 plus years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of our American society and finds himself floundering to survive the atrocities of police brutality as well as the black on black crime resulting from an inferiority complex and self-hatred stemming from generational trauma of racial injustice and the new Jim Crow. So we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, in 2015, we still require of our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, 